Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today, let's talk about Smart Tempo, which is an amazing feature that was introduced in 10.4. I feel like it throws a lot of people for a loop, but if you ask me what my top three cannot live without features in Logic are, Smart Tempo is definitely in that list, which is a pretty bold statement since it just came out. However, Smart Tempo allows us to record a performance, whether audio or MIDI, and instead of us having to record to a click and know the tempo, we instead can just plug right in, just play the performance. Logic will analyze that performance and it will adjust the tempo to us. And it will maintain all those little human variations that exist in a recorded performance when we don't use a click. That's pretty amazing because in the past, we would have to like figure out what tempo am I trying to record at? And then you would play around with the tempo, you would adjust it, you know, and then try to sort out what the best feeling tempo was and then record. Instead, now logic just adapts to us. To access smart tempo, we just have to go to the control bar at the top here. If you do not see this tempo section in the control bar, all you need to do is control click or right click the control bar, select that option, customize control bar and display, click on it. And under the LCD section, there's this option for tempo. So you can enable that and now it should be there in your control bar. Underneath project tempo are three options. We have either keep, which is logic as usual, logic as we've always known it. If your project is set at 120 BPM, or in this case, 107, it's 107. That's it. The click is set to 107. No variations will occur with tempo. Then we have adapt. And adapt is pretty interesting. If we open the global tracks here, we can see that the tempo track is orange. We're in keep mode. It would be in blue. In this case, it's orange. Orange implies that logic is now available and ready to analyze tempos and adapt as necessary, which is amazing. And in this case, I'm not even gonna record a performance. I'm gonna open the loop browser. I'm gonna drag in the first loop, which is at 80 for BPM. Just drag this in. Logic has set the tempo to 80. This section here is blue because Logic is telling us that it's adapted the tempo to a specific tempo. And then the orange section lets us know that there's room to play and add more tempos. There is one caveat when it comes to adapt mode. And that's that adapt mode is always ready to adapt to a tempo. So if I go in here and I just drag in one of these regions, drag it in, Logic's gonna analyze the tempo and now it's made variations based on this region here. So you can see it's added an extra bar for some reason, but now the tempo has been adjusted. It's no longer at 80 BPM, it's set to 88.2 and it adjusts from there based on this region. That's not really helpful to us because once we start laying down regions or laying down recordings and we have a specific tempo in mind, we don't really want Logic to continue to adapt the tempo track. So in that case, we can go back, we're gonna select the third option called Auto, which is sort of like a smart mode for smart tempo. Since we can see here that 80 BPM is what we are set at now because of this loop, if I drag in that region, again, drag it in, Logic again is going to analyze and it's moved some stuff around, the tempo is still set at 80, regardless of the internal tempo of this region. But if I back up and I drag this region, not anywhere in the blue, but only in the orange, Logic again analyzes and then Logic adapts. So it maintains 80 BPM for this section where this region exists, but it has adjusted the tempo down here. And look at that, it's pretty amazing. The tempo has been adjusted and you can hear it here. So if we just turn on the click, let's listen. Perfect. Okay, so let's open a new project, brand new project, because I wanna do something a little different. In this project, we're gonna introduce a set of audio files. I've recorded a series of drum tracks and I wanna drag these in and I want Logic to analyze not just one track, but the set of tracks. So if I go up here, set it to auto and then introduce these drum tracks, drop it on bar two. Okay, Logic is gonna ask us a couple questions. First, do we wanna create new tracks or use existing tracks? I wanna create new tracks. I wanna make sure this is checkmarked where all selected files are stems from one project, cause they are, they're all drum tracks from the same project. I want Logic to keep in mind 
all these tracks when it's adjusting the tempo. So if we hit OK, Logic is going to go ahead and analyze the audio files. Now, there's a little bit of a mishap here. Logic did not adjust the tempo track, but that's A-OK. -okay. If we select any one of these regions, hit E to open the Smart Tempo Editor. If I click on Edit, Logic's going to take a moment again to analyze, and now it has adjusted based on this set of tracks. Let's listen. Brilliant. If you decide that you don't want certain tracks to be kept in mind when analyzing with Smart Tempo, it's easy. Just go to the Smart Tempo Editor, once again using Key Command E, go to Edit, and go to Edit Smart Tempo Multi Track Set. And from here, we can decide oh, I don't want the overheads kept in mind with this multi track set when analyzing for tempo, but we're just going to leave things as is. Now it can get a little more interesting from here. This drum performance was not recorded with a click, but maybe I want to tighten up the performance as if it was recorded to a click. To do this, let's first make sure that our drums are grouped together. So any edits that are made are represented across the entire kit. So I'm going to create a new group in the mixer in the group field here. Go to new group. I'm going to call it drum. I'm going to go into the settings in the group section here. I want to make sure that editing selection and quantize locked audio is set because I want to make sure that these things are phase coherent as adjustments are made. And then I want to make sure that only the kick and the snare are really the guiding tracks. And from there, we can set these regions to flex and follow. If I set this to align bars and beats, Logic's going to do a little bit of an analysis and now Logic is going to have these tracks follow the tempo track. We've extrapolated the internal tempo and placed it onto the tempo track, but now Logic is having these regions follow the tempo track itself. And if we go into flex mode, we can see that some adjustments have been made and set to slicing because this is a drum kit, which is exactly what we want. So now we're going to go in the opposite direction and I'm going to remove all of these nodes just to remind ourselves what this sounds like. Let's turn on the click. Okay, now I'm gonna remove all these nodes. I'm gonna set the tempo track to a solid 90 and Logic is flexing these tracks to the new tempo. And flex is the entire under the hood system for managing different tempos. So now let's check it out. Which is pretty amazing. Now, it's not just set it and forget it. This is an automated solution, so there will be some mishaps along the way. Um, I'm gonna try to find some. And it's not Logic's fault, it's doing the best it can with a lot of incoming information. We just have to help it along. Let's try and see if we can find some glitches. doing pretty good but you may find artifacts or glitches and the solution is simply just to use the erase tool you know I've set it by using key command T and holding command and sending it to the erase tool and it's just removing those flex markers that are causing any artifacts like zipper noises or just anything that sounds out of sorts super handy so now we've taken a drum performance that was not recorded to a click we've extrapolated the tempo and then we removed the tempo and had the drums lock to a solid tempo Again, this is all automated features and you're gonna have to fine tune it from there. But at this point, we could have the bassist, the guitar player, whoever, now record to this locked in performance. One last thing I wanna show you is how to have Logic adapt to a MIDI performance. Now, multi-track sets and MIDI performances was introduced with 10.4.2. So if you're on 10.4 or before, you're not gonna see these features. But I'm gonna create a drum kit designer track. And I want Logic to adapt to this performance I'm about to lay down. And I'm gonna purposefully start adjusting my tempo. It might not sound consistent because I'm gonna speed up, slow down, whatever, and let's see what happens. I'm gonna hit record. All 
And from there, Logic has adapted to this. What's amazing about Smart Tempo is we no longer have to worry about our MIDI not lining up with the tempo. If you had a tempo of 120, but you didn't use a click to lay down that performance, if we then adjust the tempo, the MIDI blocks would move around in terms of timing, regardless if they actually were at 120 BPM or not. But what's great about this is I can now remove all these tempo nodes and we can set a more consistent performance. It's gonna sound a little crazy, but I'm setting it to 150 and now the MIDI blocks will lock to 150. This is why I love Smart Tempo. The click is sort of irrelevant now if we're in the mode of producing or songwriting and start laying down the bare bones of it and Logic can adapt to our performance and then we can fine tune from there and get a more consistent performance. So I hope that was helpful to you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new blog posts, new emails to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.